It is time to put our responsive work to practice. We are going to be building out a responsive website. And here is an example of what we're going to create. So this is the finalized version. And as you can see, this is what it will look like at a large screen layout. I'm going to open up my developer tools and I will just go ahead and toggle the device toolbar so that you can see what this looks like at a small screen. So at a mobile device, the layout is going to transform to a one column layout like we see here. And at a large screen, it will move from a one column layout to a multi column layout. It also is worth noting that when my page is really wide, my content maxes out. So I'm not just letting the content run wild and get as wide as the screen can possibly go. Here's an example of the starting file that we will be working from. So this is the small screen layout. It doesn't have quite the same formatting as the built out one, but the basic elements are there. And then obviously when our screen gets big, we really start to not get the same sort of experience at all. Without further ado, let's get to it and let's start building this out. I am going to go ahead and resize my screen down so it's fairly small. I recommend that you always start developing your websites from a mobile first approach. This is the best way to build websites. You're going to want to deliver up the content for the small screen first. And then once you have that all dialed in, we can go ahead and create our media query and develop the site for the larger screen. So let me just introduce you to the code that I have so far. In regards to the HTML, I'm using an HTML5 document. I'm linking out to a reset.css file that we've discussed in previous exercises. And I'm linking out to a basic style.css file, which I'll show you in just a minute. In regards to the HTML, I start off with a header. The header contains an H1, an H2, and a paragraph. That is what we see right here. Then I have the main area of my website. The main area is going to wrap around this whole portion of the page and go all the way down to the footer. So within main, I have a section element that wraps around an H1 that says featured monthly sea creatures and then I have three articles and the articles are set up identical they are an article element they are followed by an h2 a paragraph the paragraph has a link and then I have a figure element and the figure element has an image and a fake caption and that just repeats itself three times so these articles are the exact same code I've just swapped out some of the text and the images. And then after my main, I have a footer and the footer simply contains a paragraph. So that is it for our beginning HTML. In regards to the CSS, here's the starting CSS that I'm using. I have a rule for my HTML that just sets the font size to 10 pixels. That's just to make it a little bit easier for me to use my rem unit of measurements. I don't have to do any kind of fancy math. On the body element, I'm setting the overall font size to one and a half rems, and I'm setting my font family to Verdana Arial Sans Serif. On H1s, I am removing the bold formatting and setting the font size. Same thing on the H2s. On the paragraphs, I simply have a margin on the bottom. And on the hover state, I am simply removing the underline and changing the color. In order to show you that, let me just get out of the responsive view and just show you this on a regular view because the responsive view does not allow for a hover. I'm just going to open up my developer tools quickly and I'm gonna tear these off just to get them out of the way. So here are my developer tools and I just wanted to show you that when I toggle the device toolbar, all the content shrinks a little bit and that's a result as not having a media query. So I have some CSS, the CSS is going to change and if my page is displaying not in the device toolbar, you can see I get some horizontal scrolling and that is dependent on the width of the page. But because my images are a certain width, if the page does not support 
that wide of images, then they will give me some scrolling. So I just wanted to show that to you. I'll move this away for now. I'm just going to go into the device toolbar for right now because I think it's a little bit easier to see. And the next item is main. I just have some padding around main so the text and the images don't butt up with the edge of the browser. I have some formatting on my main H1. I'm setting a color and making the font weight bold. And on the fig captions, I have set a color, text line of center, and font family size and style as a font shorthand. And finally, on the footer, I have a background color, text color, font size, padding, and text align center. What I have not included in my CSS are any of the responsive code. We're going to be building that out together, and we can kind of review what we've talked about up until this point, along with just showing you how we can build a responsive web page. So without further ado, let's get into it. So before we get into the CSS, we have a couple of things that we're going to need to do in our HTML. So let's move back to the HTML. The very first thing that I need to do to ensure my page will work in a responsive way is I need to add that meta viewport element. So I'm going to come into my head section. It doesn't matter where you put this in the head section. It just has to be in the head. I generally like to group my meta tags together. So I'll put this underneath the other metas. And I'm going to go ahead and create a meta element. We'll go ahead and pass in the name attribute and assign it to viewport as well as the content. And we're going to set that to a width equals device width and initial scale of 1.0. So this is just going to allow the page to work in a responsive way. If I move back to the page content and we simply click refresh, I'm in this device toggle mode. You can see how everything has changed. Now this is clearly not what we want either. You can see that the page content now has strange spacing over here on the right. That's because technically the page width is this area, but my images are extending past that page width. They're holding the page open. And that's just because we haven't added any of our responsive code yet. Once we do that, that will resolve itself but our text is now working in the appropriate way. And as we continue to build this, this will look much better. Every page that you build from here on out needs to contain this meta viewport element. So you're just gonna make this part of your process and include it on every single page. The other thing that I wanna do to my HTML is I'm going to use the picture element. We reviewed that in a previous lecture as well. So instead of just having the image element, I'm going to use my picture element so that I can display different images. And if we go back to the finalized version really quickly, in my mobile view, I'm using this kind of more horizontally aligned image. But when I get to my large screen view, I've cropped the image and the image is almost more of a square orientation instead of rectangular. So that's what we're going to do with our code. Let me go back to the file we're working from. And this is just going to repeat itself for all of our figure and image elements. I'm going to select the image. We'll cut that. We'll go ahead and create a picture element. And then inside the picture element, I'm going to go ahead and I'll just paste in the image because we know we're going to need that to be there. And then before the image, is going to display, I'm going to use my source element. And within the source element, we will be adding the attribute of media. I'm going to set that equal to and inside the quotes, I'll set up the condition, we might need to change the values that we're going to use, you can just start with something that you assume is going to work. And then obviously, if you need to change these values, you can. I'm going to set a min width of 800 pixels. What I am assuming is that my page is going to look pretty good in this one column layout and with these wider images until about 800 pixels. And then once I get to 800 pixels, I want my images to swap out and show this alternate version at a minimum width of 800 pixels, which is what we're writing right here. We want to show these smaller versions of the picture. I'll go ahead and set the condition. 
which is my min width 800. The minimum width of the page has to be 800. And then we'll go ahead and we'll use our source set attribute. I'm going to type source set and we'll make that equal to, and then inside of quotes, I'll just put the path to the image that I want to display. The image that I want to display for this first one is just shark360.jpg. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy my source element since I need to use that twice. And I'll go ahead and I'll paste this in. And for the second source element, my min width in this case is just gonna be zero because this is what I want to happen from zero. That's the minimum width that I'm working from right now. So I'll set that to be zero. And I want to display my shark700.jpg, which is the same image that I'm showing as the default fallback content. I've gone ahead and set that up. If we save right now and we refresh our page, you're gonna see that if my page gets wider than 800 pixels, the image, the first image anyways, is gonna swap out and show this cropped, more squared version of the image. When my page is anything less than 800, it will show this wider version of the image. So that is how I want this to work. I'm simply going to copy this code and we'll just go ahead and do the same thing with these other images down here. They're just gonna contain the exact same thing. I'm just gonna swap out the images. I'll just do that quickly. And now if I save and we come back and refresh, the page should look the same at the small screen, anything less than 800. And then once I get wider than 800 pixels, the images are all gonna swap out and show this more square cropped version. That is working. We've gone ahead and made all the changes that we need to to our HTML. Let's go ahead and let's move on to the CSS so that we can continue to set up the page. Once again, it is worth remembering that right now I'm working on the small screen version. I just make my browser window small. I can test and just make sure that everything is working in the way that I want. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set up my grid. Now, technically, I probably don't need the grid for the small screen because I already have this in a one column layout, but let me just show you what happens if I don't have that much content. I'll just go into my HTML and let me just comment out two of these articles. And if we save now, we'll just have one article. What I wanna have happen is I want the footer to always appear at the bottom of the page, no matter how much content appears at the page. And right now, what happens is when my web page doesn't contain enough content to force vertical scrolling, the footer is just going to appear underneath the rest of the content. Using our grid, we can force this to always appear at the bottom of the page. And since this is definitely something that we are gonna wanna have happen at our larger screen view, as well as the small screen, I might as well do this in the mobile first version of my page. The first thing that I need to do is I need to tell the web page that I want both the HTML and the body element to take up 100% of the available space. If we look at our developer tools, and if I hover over the body, you can see that currently the body is only encompassing the content that is on the page. And if we go to the HTML, same. The HTML is taking up only what it needs to. We will force that to work in the way that we want by making a group selector for both the HTML and the body. And I'm simply going to specify that my width be 100% as well as the height be 100%. And now if we save our page and we refresh, nothing has visibly changed. So this is something that you need to be aware of. Sometimes when you make edits to the web page, the results don't always display as they should. I'll, let me show you how you can fix this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open my developer tools once again. And currently, if I hover over the body and the HTML, they look the same. What happens is the browser tends to kind of get stuck in this mobile view. If you actually just 
uncheck the toggle device toolbar and then re go in to the device toolbar, it should resolve. And you can see that my page looks much different. And currently, if I hover over the body, it's now taking up 100% of the available space and the HTML is doing the same. This is allowing us to ensure that the container is gonna fill up the entire browser window, which is what we want. Now that we have that in place, let's go ahead and let's divide up the content so that it appears in the way that we want. What I will do next is I'm gonna go ahead and add a rule onto the body element. I'm just going to use the body element that I already have. We're gonna tell the body to display as grid. And the reason that I'm setting the grid parent on the body is if we look in our HTML, you'll see that the body has three direct descendants, the header, the main, and the footer. We're gonna use grid so that we can instruct those elements and tell them where to be within the page. We're gonna use display grid. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use grid template rows. And for the value, we're gonna specify auto for the first element, which is the header. We basically want this element to just be as tall as it naturally needs to be. So auto is gonna allow us to do that. I'll use one FR for the next element, which is my main element. This means that this element is gonna get as tall as it possibly can. We are not gonna use any other fractional units, so that means it's just gonna take up whatever available space is there, aside from whatever the header needs and whatever the footer needs. We will go ahead and specify that. Then I'm gonna use a rule on grid template columns, and we're gonna tell the columns to be 100% wide. And if we save our page now and we refresh, and let's go ahead and just open up our developer tools. I'm gonna to jump out of the toggle device toolbar and you can actually see what's happening here. The header is taking up whatever space it needs to. The main is taking up the rest of the available space. So technically it doesn't need all of this horizontal space, but it's gonna take up whatever it can. And then the footer just takes up whatever space it needs to. So this is allowing us to display the page in the way that we want. If I go back into my toggle device toolbar, we don't really see much of a difference because at this small view, the main is taking up the space that is there. And, and part of the reason is because we haven't made our images responsive. Let's go ahead and let's fix that as well. I'll come back into the editor and I'm gonna make a rule for images. And we're just gonna use that trick of making our images responsive by specifying the max width of being 100% and the height will just be auto. If we save the page now and refresh, you can now see the page starts to come together and this is what it's going to look like. Even though normally the footer might end up right underneath this article, it's being pushed down to the bottom and that's because main is taking up all of the height that it can since we set its height to one fractional unit. All right, let's jump back into the HTML. I'm going to uncomment out these two articles. We'll save our page. And now if we refresh, you can see that this is what my page is looking like so far. So this is looking pretty good in regards to our mobile version. I'm just gonna do a little bit of, of cleanup in here. I wanna space out the articles a little bit. We will go into our CSS and let me just make a comment here that this is our main rules. So our main rules will kind of be here. Here's my footer rules. This way I can just kind of keep everything organized. And what we will do right here is we're gonna add a rule on our main article. And I'm simply going to add a margin on the bottom. We'll set that to be two rems. I'm gonna add a border on the bottom and I'm just gonna make this solid one pixel and we'll use CCC for the color. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of padding. I'm gonna add two rems for the top and the bottom and zero for the right and the left. If we save now and we refresh, you can see that I have a little separator between my articles and some spacing. I think that looks a little bit better. 
probably don't need the underline on the very last article. Let's use our nth child to get rid of that. I'm going to make a selector of main article and we'll use last of type and we'll just tell the border bottom to be none. If we save now and we refresh, you can see that the border disappears on the last article. Even if we ended up adding more articles, the very last one would not have the underline, which is what we want. This looks pretty good for the mobile version. I don't really think I need to do much of anything else. Everything is working well. We can read the text really nicely. It appears in one column. Everything looks good on a small device. We're ready to create our media queries, and this is going to be for our large screen layout. In regards to when you choose to add a media query, because a lot of people use pre-described numbers that align with certain devices, my recommendation for you is to just start scaling the page up and determine where the layout starts to break. When the page starts to get large and the line length starts to get too long, the content doesn't read well, that's the time to add a breakpoint. That could be at 500 pixels, it could be at 1000 pixels, it just depends on your content. I really recommend just inserting breakpoints where the layout breaks rather than trying to align it with some particular device. The reason why is because there's always a new device. The resolution of those devices is going to be different. So that number is always going to change. You're chasing something that is constantly in flux. A better solution, in my opinion, is to simply make a breakpoint where the layout changes. I feel like this one column view works pretty good for this example. Until about 750, 800 pixels, something around there. At that point, and obviously we're swapping out our images at 800 pixels, but at this point, the line length starts to get a little too long. We have enough room here to support multiple columns. I think I'm just going to use 800 as my media query. And again, if you try this and you don't like it, it's just code, you know, go in and change it, try something else. It'll take you a while to kind of find those sweet spots. And it is going to depend on the project that you're working on. It might be different on different projects. You might not always be using the same media query. So just keep that in mind and feel free to experiment. I'm going to go ahead and define a media screen and min width of 800 pixels. And let me just make a couple of returns so that our code gets pushed up. I'll just make a comment down here at the bottom so this code will be a little bit higher on the screen. A little bit easier for you to see. And then let's think about what we want to have happen at the large screen. At our larger screen, I don't want this to display in a one column environment anymore. I want to have multiple columns. For the middle section, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create three columns of content. We will do that by applying a grid on the section element. All of our articles are contained within a section, as well as this first H1 element. The direct descendants of section are H1, the first article, the second article, and the third article. So that's going to be my hook that I'm going to use to apply a grid so that I can create multiple columns. I will make a selector for main section. We're going to tell this to have a display of grid. And we're going to use our grid template columns and we'll go ahead and use the repeat function. I'm going to repeat three times and have the columns take up one fractional unit each. So this will equally divide the page in three columns. I am also going to add a grid gap and let's just try a grid gap of maybe three rems. And if we save now and refresh, as long as the page is wider, then 800 pixels, I will get my three columns. Now, because the H1 is a direct descendant of section, it also takes up a column. It's going to take up the first column, second column, third, and then this one takes up the first column on the next row. Really what I want is I want this H1 to take up the entire width and then the three articles share a third of the space. We can do that by targeting 
our section H1, and I'm going to use section greater than H1. I'm selecting the direct descendant of the section, not H1s that might be located somewhere else, but just ones that are the direct descendants of section. And we're gonna use our grid column, and I'm just gonna simply tell it to start at column one, and then I'll do a forward slash and negative one, so it will span the entire width. And if we save now and refresh, you can see that this takes up the first row, the entire column, and then these each take up a third. That looks pretty good. We do have a little bit of things to clean up. First of all, I no longer need this border on the bottom. And what I think I'd like to do is probably create a vertical line that separates out these columns. So we'll move this from the bottom to appearing in between these columns. And the other thing that I wanna show you is when my page gets really wide, my layout starts to get funky again, right? Like the line length is too long on this paragraph up here in the header, and then these get a little too wide as well. So we want to resolve that. And what I'd really like to do is prevent these from getting too wide, and then as a unit, center this middle section. Let's see what we can do in regards to that. In regards to preventing the page from getting too wide, I'm gonna go back to main section and I'm going to apply a max width of 1200 pixels. This will ensure that the maximum width of this section element is never greater than 1200 pixels. So that means that technically if each of these columns is taking up a third, they will roughly be about 400 pixels wide, which sounds like it will work pretty well. I also want to center the section as a unit. We're just gonna simply use our margin auto to do that. And now if I save and refresh, if my page is wider than 1200 pixels, you can see that the section element is going to remain in the middle and never exceed 1200 pixels wide. If my page gets more narrow, those columns can shrink until they reach the media query of 800 pixels. And in that case, it'll switch to the one column view. So now I'm really starting to build a nice responsive page. Now the next problem that I have is that the header text is also getting too wide. I would like to do something similar on that, prevent it from getting wider than 1200 pixels, as well as center it as a unit within the page. If we come back, I'm gonna to have to use a new selector to do this. And what I'm gonna target is if we look at our header, I have the header H1, H2, and paragraph. Those are the elements that I want to prevent from getting too wide and kind of center as a unit. In regards to a selector, what I'm gonna use here, and I'll put this in my media query, is I'm gonna use header greater than asterisk, which means every child of the header is going to be affected by what we write right here. We'll do a max width of 1200 pixels once again, and a margin of auto. If we save now and we refresh, we get the same sort of treatment. You can see that our text is now restricted from getting overly wide. And if I resize my page, it scales down as it should. The next item that I want to do is let's take care of these little borders that we were talking about earlier. Once again, I'm still inside my media query and let me just indent this just to keep this nice and neat. I like to indent the rules that are part of the media query since it makes it a little bit more visually apparent that they are children of the media query. What we'll do here is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna target our articles that are children of main, and I'm going to set the border bottom to none. That'll remove the border on the bottom. We're going to add a border on the right, and let's set this to be the same settings, solid one pixel, and we'll use CCC for the color. I'm gonna also add some padding on the right, and let's just try two rems for that. And finally, I think I'll add a margin bottom and let's just do two rems on that. If we save and we refresh, 
You can see I've eliminated the borders on the bottom and added the borders in on the right. That looks pretty good, except that I don't need the border on the final article. So we can use our nth child to target that final article. I'm going to use a selector of main article and we'll use last of type. And I'm going to go ahead and specify that the border right be none. And I'm going to remove the padding on the right as well. So we'll just set that to zero. And if we save now and refresh, that looks a little bit better. I don't like how this width is uneven and that has to do with the gap that we specified earlier. Let's just make these match instead of using three. I'm going to use two since I'm using padding of two. I think that will optically look a little bit better. Now the lines are going to be centered. I like that much better. Great. That's looking pretty good. And the final thing I want to do at the large screen is I'm going to change the order in which the pictures appear. Instead of having the text and then the pictures, I'm going to have every other article have the picture on the top and then the text. And then this middle one will have the text and then the picture. We can do that by using our order property. And there's a couple different ways that we can approach this. I think I'm going to use flex to do it, but we could certainly do something similar using grid. It's not to say that one is better over the other in this situation, but just to show you how we can mix flex and grid together. Let's go ahead and do that. If we look in our HTML, the articles contain the H2, the paragraph, and then the figure element. Technically, we could move this in the HTML and put the figure element first in the first article and the third article. But from a semantic perspective and an accessibility perspective, it's better to have the text appearing first and then the image. If a screen reader comes here, they really don't care that much about the image. They can't see it. So the text is the most important. It's better to have that appearing first in our code. I'm not going to touch the code. I'm just going to change the design or the order of these elements using CSS. So what we will do is we'll go back to our CSS file and I'm going to tell the main articles to display as flex items. And because by default flex is going to make everything appear side by side, we're going to use our flex direction property and tell that to be a column. So it won't change the appearance of the articles. They're still going to just be vertically aligned instead of appearing side by side. And now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my nth child selectors. We'll use main article and let's use nth child. And in the parentheses, I'm going to pass in even. This will get the first, the third, and you might think, well, one is an odd number, three is an odd number. But in CSS, we start counting with zero. So technically, this is article zero, one, two. Zero and two are even numbers, so that's why we're using even right here. And I don't want to just target the articles, but I want to target the figures that are children of the even numbered articles. And all I have to do here is specify my order property, and I'll use negative one to bring these to the top. If we come back to our page and we refresh, you can see that we've changed the order so that the picture appears first in the first and the third column. And then in the middle column, it appears on the bottom. And this is what my page looks like at a very large screen. As I shrink my page a little down, it's responsive. The content just shrinks. Once we hit our media query, anything less than 800 is going to now just completely alter and change to our one column view. And in the one column view, I would prefer to have the images appearing underneath the text. I think that looks much better. And there you have it. We have a completely responsive page. We're using a lot of the stuff that we've covered up until now. Media queries, flexible grids, and Flexbox to control the layout as well as just a plethora of different CSS rules in order to style this page in this way. Well, I hope you found this practical example to be useful, and I would encourage you to build out your own responsive pages and give this a try. 
let's see what you can produce when you go ahead and incorporate all of the things that we've talked about.